This skill saw has some brush issues. I'm going to take it apart and see if I can fix it. First thing you always want to do is make sure it's unplugged. Now this one has a combination of torque screws and straight bit. So I'm going to see if this torque screwdriver will meet my needs. Yep, that's the right size. This is a Milwaukee Torx bit screwdriver and it's come in quite handy. Torx bits engage a lot better than the standard straight bit screwdriver or especially a Phillips. Phillips just comes apart. Well, there's still plenty of spring left on that brush. How am I going to get this off of here? Not fastened in my screws. Is it held in my clips? Want to break it? Looks like I might be better off pulling the housing and we'll see what happens. Loosen up the guard and we well, we should be able to swing this down like so. Well, that's not where it's catching. Yeah, the screw's all the way out. The armature looks like it's kind of scored. Might have to turn that. Pulling the winding, seeing if I can get down in there and remove the brushes. That means I'm going to have a couple of wires going to the coil I have to be careful of. Yep, they're right there. Well, I got the brush out easy enough. Maybe I didn't have to pull the coil. Looks like this is held in. Just pressed into those. Oh, it hooks onto the coil. So when the coil dropped down, this, this little uh, clip here goes onto a pin on the top of the coil. So I don't think I need to pull the coil as much as I need to, if I want to take these out, I need to pull them straight up. There's a little pin right down in there. That's where the coil wire connects to the brushes. It's actually a pretty good design. Now looking at the brush, It appears to be in pretty good shape. I'm going to take a file and file that off flat because after I get done turning the commutator, I'll 
I'll put this in the lathe and clean that up right there. Looks like we're not flat. See how that one's not getting much marking on it? And the rest of these are showing some have marking on them and some don't. That's telling me that this commutator is not round. And when that happens, the brushes jump off and that causes the arcing. Flatten off the end of the brush. There, those two are square. Now we need to go over to the lathe. I got about two thousands run out, and I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Yep, two thousands. Not the greatest, but it's well within the tolerance of my equipment. Definitely have some run out. You can see where that one's hitting hard. And these, the tool's not touching. So this is causing the, the brush to jump up. I'm going to check run out on that though. Because I have it mounted in a three jaw chuck, there's a, always a chance that it's not going to be absolutely straight. I got about two thousands run out, and I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Yep, two thousands. Not the greatest, but it's well within the tolerance of my equipment. Nope. 
can't have the steady rest in there. That's better. One problem with filing copper is it pins awfully easy. As it's so soft and deforms, it rivets itself down in there in the rough surface of the file. Because unlike a lot of tools, files are not smooth. manufacturing process leaves them with a rough edge. That little pick right there is for taking out pins. There's a tool for this called a mica undercutter. And it's designed to go in there and remove that insulator in between the commutators. I do not have such a tool. If I was doing this according to the book, I would have a mica undercutter. And I'd have a much better set of tools for that lathe. And I'd have a much straighter lathe and I'd have a, a live center to go on the end of that. Unfortunately, my live center has decided that it's no longer going to function. I think the live center snapped when I was doing the knurling on the number 78 depth stop screws. putting too much pressure on it. Scissors type neural probably is the thing I need to have. Okay. Need some lightweight grease. And I just happen to have some lightweight grease. I need to put the screws back into this. One on that side and one on this side. That, these are the two screws that hold the coil in. There's the windings back in. I will set the housing back down on it. Take 
careful not to damage anything. Lining that bearing back up. Looks like it's going down. Don't want to tighten up any of them until I have all of them started. Milwaukee Torque screwdriver sure has come in handy. I think I got it at Home Depot, but I can't remember exactly. Okay, that's got that one drawn down, that one too. That one. And that one. Okay. Now, time to put the brushes on. These should be slipped in there. They should compress the spring. And that slips down with the top of that connector. Yeah, that seat's down in all the way. That's good. And we do the same thing with this one. Seat's down in all the way. Springs compressed, wires are connected, looks like we got it. Now the last thing to go on is this cover. Is there a top or a bottom to it? Doesn't look like it. If I was designing a, screw, a saw like this one, I certainly would make this piece so it didn't have a top or a bottom to it. I'd want to have it be universal. That way when it's out on the assembly line, you can't end up with the end cap being put on upside down and the saw not work. Okay, that's tight. Now, while I'm here, I'm just going to go along and make sure all these other screws are tight. General maintenance. Okay. Now we flip this around so we can watch and see what that does when I turn it on. This is either going to work or there's going to be a big flash of light. Well, nothing's heating up. It's going to take a little while for the brushes to seat in, but it's a lot better than what it was, and it's no longer heating up. So that tells me that my saw is actually working much better. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.